They may not be the reciprocal lilies of the field. I saw what you did. But can I cut it in the world of hardcore horticulture? Hmm. <laughs> Ruh -roh. Probably not. That always helps. <laughs>There aren't many American homes more impressive than that of Harvey Ledoux, a guy who was born rich and lived well, entertaining such figures as Cole Porter, Noel Coward, Charlie Chaplin, Clark Gable, and Somerset Mom. Which begs the question, what am I doing here? Don't say le don't when you can Ledoux. Anybody ever put that on a shirt or anything? Hi, Mike. Welcome. Nice Hi. to have you with Ladoo. Well, it's nice to be had. What's your name? Emily. Emily? Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe, nice to meet you. Come on in. Wow. This is an old house, and I'm sure it's not my grandmother's house. Mr. Ledoux bought this property in 1929. He lived up in New York, and he was a big horse person, and you will see Hunt and mm -hmm. horse paintings all over the house. But he wanted to be able to have free area to ride in, and Long Island was getting too crowded. So he came down here and bought this 250-acre farm. And, and this, this is fox hunting country, which is what brought him down here. Great. Clearly, Ledoux was a guy who could do it whenever the spirit moved him. Oh, it's a hidden door. <laughs> it's a hidden door. Mr. Plum did it in the library with a candlestick, I'm certain. But he left behind more than a cool house and a great Rolodex. He left behind these. Turns out this man of leisure was obsessed with work specifically with topiary, a fancy term that describes the process whereby a shrubbery is turned into a dog or a giraffe. He was out here every day, shears in hand, transforming his estate into a living museum. This was his life's work, which brings us to these guys. Technically, I guess they're gardeners, but something tells me there's more to it. What's your official title here? I'm a senior gardener. A senior gardener. Senior gardener. Are you a junior gardener or gardener of wood? Uh, uh, head of horticulture or head of gardens. Well, wait a minute. Who's in charge then? The senior gardener or the head of horticulture? We kind of take turns sometimes. Depends on what we're doing. <laughs> Division of power. What do you think of the Chia Pet as an invention? I kind of like them. Regardless of who's in charge, it's nice to know there's no disagreement about the Chia Pet. Where are you taking me, Phil? Down to the bottom of the iris garden. The iris garden? The iris garden. It was one of Mr. Ledoux's favorite flowers, so he created a whole garden full of them. How long did he live? He died in 1976. He was 89 years old. The late Mr. Ledoux was a socialite and avid fox hunter who traveled extensively throughout Europe, where he first came to admire topiary gardens. So, after buying 250 acres in Maryland on which to chase foxes, Harvey began the task of building the ideal garden almost entirely by himself. How long have you been here, Tyler? I just celebrated 15 years this year. Congratulations. Phil? I've been here 34 years. 34? 34. 34. <laughs> so is it pretty much year-round? Yeah. There's plenty to do here. All right, well, what, what can I do to help out? Well, you want to start on the topiary junk. The topiary what? Topiary junk. Junk? Junk, a Chinese ship. Oh, junk, OK. At first, we got to get over to it. Part of my job as a serious journalist is to ask my subjects a series of hard-hitting, probing questions. What kind of tree is this? That is a double-file viburnum. Huh. What kind of grass is this? It's a mixture of tall fescues and bluegrass. Interesting. What are these? That is catnip or catmint. Huh. Oh, that's nice. What kind of trees are those? Those are crab apples. Uh-huh. How about this here? Rhododendron. Oh. oh, what are these? Hostas. Oh. And here's where we'll bridge from. We'll set this down. Oh, what's this purple thing? That's a <laughs> weeping cherry tree. Uh, Circus. Circus. Uh, okay, bug. red bug. Excuse me. Uh oh. It's new. You got me. <laughs> but I appreciate the uh, certainty with which so, you plowed ahead. Well, if you don't know, <laughs> be positive. I have always <laughs> said that. <laughs> I have always said that. That's right. Smile and go. What you got right there is a Saracen. <laughs> All right, let's look at the junk. OK, so we're going to extend the plank and head out. And sally forth. And lift it up, and then we'll get on each side and give it a little heave-ho. Right. On three. Really? We're going to heave it? Yep. All right. 
One, two, three. You're you. a genius, man. You're a genius. So how much are you looking to take off? Uh, just enough to keep it flat. Just to, flat to even it up, yep. yeah. The right. most important part of trimming a hedge is this angle right here. If you can get that sharp, the rest of it looks good. All right. So is this the pinnacle of what a gardener uh, can do and be? Pretty much. There's so much here that you need a lot of skills. You also need a lot of patience. I've heard people refer to gardening as the slowest of the performing arts. <laughs> And that is really why we're here. Anybody can trim a hedge or plant a rose bush, but true gardening, that's been an art form since Roman times, created to amaze and amuse an admiring public. In this tradition, Harvey Ledoux created his own masterwork, 15 separate gardens, each one with a different name and theme. And so Phil and Tyler aren't really gardeners at all. They're professional, art restorers, and Harvey's legacy is now in their hands. What do you think, Mike? Well, now, yeah, now, now it's junk. <laughs> is that a giraffe? That is a giraffe. So this giraffe has been here longer than me, and it's just now starting to fill in. We're going to try and pull some foliage up to the tip of his nose. To give him a head. So this is a pretty good example of the patience you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And the uh, name of the, uh, the plant? Plant material, it's a ligustrum, a golden privet. A golden privet. Now that was some other kind of privet before, on the junk, right? Yeah, that was uh, more of a common privet. This is, this is yellow or golden. We're kind of getting out of reach, aren't we? Yeah, we are. So looking at this, there's not a whole lot there. But we can tuck all these pieces in. All that through there. Yeah, we don't want to lose a what a little brains he's got. <laughs> right. So in a couple years, the ears are going to fill out, and then, uh, you know, the brain stem, the uh, medulla oblongata, hypothalamus, and then the, uh, the face, the countenance, the visage. That's French. Beautiful. I think we're good. Yeah? Yeah. Unlike a Matisse or a Rembrandt, a Ledoux doesn't live forever. It's part of Phil and Tyler's job to decide when to replace an older topiary. So this is the hunt scene. When he first moved here, he was inspired by this topiary that he saw in England, which was the fox chase on a head. One of the hounds died, so we need yeah. to create a new topiary hound. Great. Let's go release the hounds. The extensive topiary gardens in Moncton, Maryland are Harvey Ledoux's Sistine Chapel, his last supper, his magic flute, and the staff here does everything they can to maintain this magnum opus exactly as Harvey envisioned it. So if a topiary starts to fail, it'll be replaced by another in the exact same shape and from the exact same plant type. So this is what a hound frame looks like. Right. And it's almost art in itself. Right? Almost. Almost, oh, except yeah. if you were to just put this in the ground like this, mm -hmm. I believe people would demand some sort of refund. <laughs> so <laughs> the challenge now is to put that plant in here. <laughs> so you can kind of see there's a lot of plant material and a little room. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I feel like we're trying to build a ship in a bottle. Might be a little like that. All right. Explain to me how your mind's working when you're just deciding what stays and what goes. Pliable is probably the main thing. Make sure that you can actually bend it down and get it into the frame. Got it. And we're going to start. Can I hold this for you? You can hold that. All right, so he's going to go like that. Man, you ever have just dreams that these things just spring to life and just go running? Yeah, about midway through the season after you cut so many topiaries, you start dreaming about it. That's exactly what I would dream about, those things coming to life and chasing me down. I'd be the fox for sure, <laughs> running for my life. We're, we're stuffing this dog. Button always helps. Never hurt. So, are you getting this? We have to jam every. It's I not mean, every basically. One, but you'll, but you'll, it's got to come down into the whole some. thing. Mm -hmm. It's got to come not much more. Rebar is on the ground. Right, where's right. the rebar? Oh. So, it's right there. It's the support. So, you get, you're kind of close. We're I mean, close. Close. That's good. And then what you can do, and I can show you here, is this tail. There's actually some I got started. You can kind of pull his tail out. Well, that sounds like a real treat, Phil. 
So you can just ease it out. Uh -huh. If you're just joining us, I'm making a dog. Even if you're not just joining us. Cicero said, if you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. Well, Harvey Ledoux had both. And if you find yourself in Moncton, Maryland, you can see them firsthand. You can also see a shrub in the shape of a heart, or a fish, or a fox. Or perhaps, most importantly, you can see the fruits of my labor. I made a dog, and right now it doesn't look like much, but he will slowly he will grow into the, into the running beasts. Yeah, five years it'll really be presentable. That's 35 years in dog years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a while. Do you name the dogs, the hounds? No. No, that's too bad. We'll name that one Mike, if it lives. If it lives. In my industry, if he's not canceled, he'll be running here <laughs> at Ledoux Topiary Gardens in this basic posture for the rest of his long and long and happy life. Yes. This has been extraordinary, weird, and educational. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you so much, Mike. It's fantastic. Emily, come over here and shake my hand. Thanks, you know where Mike. it's been. Thanks. You were awesome. Thank you. All right, thanks. That was delightfully odd.